सरस्वते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम ज्ञानतिमीरांध से ज्ञानांजनाशलाकय चक्षुरन्मीत तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामी नमस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिणी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण आई वेलकम ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स फॉर टुडेस सेशन ऑन द फाइव जिवल्स ऑफ भगवद गीता इन द लास्ट थ्री वीक्स वी डिस्कस थ्री ब्यूटीफुल श्लोकास फ्रॉम द गीता स्पेशली फ्रॉम द भक्ति योगा सेक्शन सेवन चैप्टर टू ट्वेल्व चैप्टर and we saw several topics whether we can understand and know krishna completely and many other such topics today we will focus on this topic how to connect with krishna through our emotions right so actually we need to connect with krishna in all ways uh, by using our body by using our mind by using our intelligence uh, uh, but every uh, flavor of connecting with krishna has its own significance in spiritual life so let's uh, um, discuss based on this beautiful shloka from the 10th chapter of bhagavad gita aham sarvasya prabhavo mattah sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam budha bhava samanvitah recite कार्तिक एंड कामाक्षी प्रभव मत्वर्तते अहम सर्व प्रभव मत सर्व प्रवर्तते मजंते मं बुद्धा भाव सामता अहम सर्वस्य प्रभो मत्तह सर्वम प्रवर्तते इति मत्वा भजन्ते मां ओके चिन्मयी अहम सर्वस्य प्रभवो मत्तह सर्वम प्रवर्तते इति मत्वा भजन्ते मां बुधा भाव समन्वित हरे कृष्ण वन लास्ट रिसिटेशन हरे कृष्णा धन्यवाद प्रणाम प्रभु जी अहम सर्व प्रभव मत सर्व पर्वतते इति मत्व भजंते मां बुधा भाव सामित थैंक यू लेट्स सी द मीनिंग ऑफ द श्लोक नाउ अहम सर्व प्रभव अहम मीन्स मी ओके द वर्ड अहम इज जनरली यूज टू इंडिकेट ईगो ओके बट हियर अहम बेसिकली मीन्स मी कृष्ण इज रेफरिंग टू हिमसेल्फ अहम सर्वस्य प्रभवो सर्वस्य मीन्स एवरीथिंग प्रभवो मीन्स द सोर्स ऑफ एमनेशन बेसिकली कृष्ण सेस इन दिस फर्स्ट श्लोक फर्स्ट लाइन दट ही इज द सोर्स ऑफ एवरीथिंग दट एक्सिस्ट इन द एंटायर कॉस्मोस एवरीथिंग इन द एंटायर स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड एंड इन द एंटायर मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड केम फ्रॉम कृष्णा कृष्णा इज द ऑरिजिन कृष्णा इज द सोर्स कृष्णा इज द कॉस ऑफ एवरीथिंग ओके दट इज अहम सर्वस्य प्रभवो then second line also is somewhat similar 
मत्ता सर्वम प्रवर्तते फ्रॉम मी कम्स एवरीथिंग मत्ता मीन्स फ्रॉम मी सर्व मीन्स एवरीथिंग प्रवर्तते इट एमनेट्स इट कम्स इट इट ऑरिजिनेट्स राइट सो बेसिकली इन द फर्स्ट टू श्लोक फर्स्ट टू लाइन्स कृष्ण इज सिंपली सेंग दैट ही इज द सोर्स ऑफ एवरीथिंग दट यू सी इन द एंटर क्रिएशन थर्ड लाइन मत्वा भजन्ते माम इति मत्वा नोइंग दट आई एम द कॉज ऑफ एवरीथिंग भजन्ते माम माय डिवोटिस सर्व मी दे डू भजन ओके दे दे परफॉर्म डिवोशनल सर्विस अन टू मी भजन्ते माम एंड हाउ बुधा भाव समन्विता अवर भजन शुड बी एकम्पनीड विथ बुधा इंटेलिजेंस एंड भावा इमोशन समन्विता मीन्स एंडोर्ड विथ so devote is render service to krishna uh, with their buddha and with their bhava with their intelligence and emotion rendering service means you use your hands and legs and eyes and all your bodily senses to do some service to krishna right that is rendering service now bhajante ma but we need to use our intelligence also in krishna service therefore krishna said buddha and we should also have emotional bonding with krishna देर फॉर कृष्ण सेट भावा सो भजनते बुधा भावा ऑल थ्री आर रिक्वायर्ड वी नीड टू यूटिलाइज अवर माइंड इंटेलिजेंस एंड बॉडी बॉडी माइंड इंटेलिजेंस ऑल थ्री मस्ट यूटिलाइज इन कृष्ण सर्विस ओके सो दैट्स द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस श्लोक द फर्स्ट टू लाइन्स द फर्स्ट हाफ ऑफ दिस ऑफ दिस श्लोक डिस्क्राइब्स हाउ कृष्ण इज द ऑरिजिन ऑफ एवरीथिंग ओके then in the second half krishna speaks you serve me with intelligence and emotion service intellectual understanding of krishna and emotional bonding with krishna all three are required so let's go little deeper into this shloka now in the first two lines where krishna said <laughs> everything emanated from me krishna is basically describing how he is the root of everything in the entire universe is the root now you see a big plant is there or a big uh, tree is there banyan tree but it all emanated from the root right you plant a small seed in the soil and that seed uh, sprouts slightly and then it slowly becomes like a small plant and a bigger plant and a big tree but the tree stands uh, only because of the root there if you cut the roots tree will collapse the root is the cause of the tree root is the source of sustenance of the tree without tree without root tree cannot exist okay when krishna said he is the cause of everything he is basically saying that he is the root of everything okay he is the root uh, of everything and now there is another root here iti matva bhajante maam okay bhajante means to render service to krishna devotional service unto krishna that devotional service is the root to reach this root okay here root is like you see in google maps we put a root right <laughs> it's a way it's the path it's the process so rendering service to krishna or bhakti yoga is the process of attaining krishna who is the cause of all causes you want to reach the root you follow this root of bhakti yoga that is bhajanti maam this is basically bhakti as krishna says in the third line fine and this is basically understanding that krishna is the cause of everything okay now if you follow this root to reach this root what is the result what is the result of following this root to reach this root buddha bhava samanvitaha bhava means emotion or bhava also refers to a very very advanced stage in bhakti you know bhakti has several stages right shraddha साधु संग भजन क्रिया अनर्थ निवृत्ति लाइक दैट इट गोस अप टू भावा एंड प्रेम भावा मीन्स एन इमोशन फॉर कृष्ण एन इमोशनल अटैचमेंट फॉर कृष्ण प्रेमा मीन्स लव फॉर कृष्ण राइट भावा इज ऑल्सो प्रेमा ओनली बट भावा इज द प्रिलिमिनरी स्टेज ऑफ लव ओके भावा इज द प्रिलिमिनरी स्टेज ऑफ प्रेमा प्रेमा इज एडवांस स्टेज ऑफ भावा राइट सो वन हू हैज प्रेमा हैज भावा वन हेज भावा हैज सम प्रेमा बट to just make them as two stages so bhava is a preliminary stage of prema and prema is the ultimate stage of bhava okay so the result of practicing bhakti is to attain emotions for krishna loving emotions bhava for krishna so bhava bhakti 
Now when you say bhajanti maam, you are performing sadhana bhakti. What is sadhana bhakti? That is devotional service in practice stage. In the practice stage, in the initial stages, we may not have so many emotions for Krishna. We may not have so much love and affection for Krishna. Somebody may cook for Krishna, but there is not so much of love and affection. Somebody may make a garland for Krishna. There may not be so much of intense love and emotional bonding with Krishna. But still, as a practice, as sadhana, they are, they are doing all the services. Right? Somebody may chant. Uh, how many times have you noticed that when you are chanting, your mind is going here and there? Anyone here? <laughs> While chanting, your mind goes all over the place, right? <laughs> so, uh, means we don't have sufficient love for Krishna. We don't have that bhava for Krishna. When we have bhava, when we have emotional bonding with Krishna, we will never uh, become inattentive in our chanting. We become very absorbed in our chanting. And we know the examples of so many devotees who went into trance while chanting. <laughs> Our Rupa Goswami says, Tunde tanda viniratim vitanute tunda vali labhaye karna kroda kadam vini ghatayate karna bhute bhespruham chieta prangana sangini vijayate sarvendriyanam kritim noja nejanitaki and biramurtai krishne tivarana dvayi. Rupa Goswami said, When I chant the holy names of Krishna, I feel like getting millions and billions of tongues to chant. When I hear the name Krishna, I desire millions of years to hear that name. So that enthusiasm all of us also can have to relish Krishna's name either through hearing or chanting, isn't it? But the problem is we don't have sufficient, sufficient emotional connection with Krishna or bonding with Krishna. We don't have sufficient love for Krishna. Therefore, we are not being attentive in saying Krishna, Krishna. Isn't it? So, uh, uh, that bhajan tema, like it's kind of, uh, you perform various devotional practices, uh, but the result of all these devotional practices is bhava. Say, right now we don't have so much love for Krishna, but we are chanting Hare Krishna. But by chanting Hare Krishna, by practicing this uh, process of chanting Krishna's names or hearing Bhagavatam, we will eventually, gradually, definitely develop that love for Krishna. Therefore, bhava, our emotional bonding with Krishna is the result of practice of devotional service. When we practice serving Krishna, we eventually develop love for Krishna, emotional connection with Krishna. Right now, our connection with Krishna may be through senses, right? We utilize our senses in Krishna's service. When we utilize our eyes in seeing Krishna's form, when we utilize our hands in serving Krishna, when we use our legs in going to Krishna's temple, or when we use our ears in hearing Srimad Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam and other scriptures, uh, then we are gradually trying to develop that uh, bhava for Krishna, love for Krishna. So, Engaging our senses in Krishna's seva will lead to an emotional bonding or connection with Krishna. Clear? Therefore, bhava is the result of sadhana. When you do sadhana, you are aiming for bhava. Clear? So, that's one way of understanding. Root, root and result. Krishna is the root of everything and the root to attain Krishna is bhakti and the result is prema, love, emotion, bonding, Right? So now let's see this whole shloka from another perspective. Okay? This is Sambandha Jnana. You know what is Sambandha? Yes, Karthik, you know what is Sambandha? Like, Sambandha is the way we connect to Krishna. It's the first step. Hmm. What is Abhideya? Abhideya is when we do revolutionary practice, we start serving Krishna. Hmm. Okay. What is Prayojan? Well, this is the ultimate stage where we start loving Krishna. We have Krishna Prema. So, Sambandha is basically the initial uh, connection with Krishna through knowledge. Now, Krishna is giving Sambandha Jnana in the first two lines. Aham sarvasya prabhavo mattaha sarvam pravartati. Everything emanated from me. I am the source of everything. I am the cause of everything. I am sarvakarana karanam. 
uh, I am the origin of everything that exists in the entire cosmos. Now, these two lines of the first of the shloka establish Krishna's supremacy and Krishna's being the source of everything. That is called Sambandha Jnan. We understand Krishna's identity. He also may have two legs and two hands and two eyes, etc. That does not mean an average human being and Krishna are same. Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He has a spiritual form and he is the source of everything. So, uh, to understand Krishna's divine identity and divine glories and greatness is called Sambandha Jnan. Okay? And uh, uh, Abhideya means an attempt that we make to uh, to cultivate that relationship with Krishna. That is Abhideya. That is mentioned in the third line. Iti matva bhajanti imam. Okay. Sambandha means you understand what is your relationship with Krishna. Like Krishna said I am the source of everything in the universe. Right. Means the relationship between Krishna and this universe is that he is the creator and this is the creation. Okay. There is a relationship between the universe and and Krishna. Similarly, who are we? What is our identity? Krishna says in another shloka of Bhagavad Gita. What is that? Mamai vamsho jiva loke jiva bhutaha sanatanaha. Krishna said that all the jivas, all the living beings are my fragmental parts, are my amshas. Aham bija pardha pitaha. I am the seed giving father of all existences. Basically, Krishna clearly said that all the living beings came from me. They are my amshas. And the entire universe came from me. Uh, I am the source. So Krishna is the source of both matter and spirit. The living beings are spiritual and the material universe is material. Right? Universe is material. The soul is spiritual and Krishna is the origin of both matter and spirit. Right? So that is called Sambandha Jnana. To understand one's connection with Krishna is Sambandha Jnana. So here, our bodies are made of matter. They came from Krishna. And we, spiritual beings, we are spiritual beings. We also are parts and parcels of Krishna. Therefore, to understand that is called Sambandha Jnana. Once you understand it, you try to revive that relationship. Oh, I am a spiritual being having an eternal relationship with Krishna. But what am I doing here? Being in the material body, pursuing material pleasures, running behind all kinds of sensual activities. So what am I doing here? So I should do something to revive my relationship with Krishna. Re-establish my relationship with Krishna. And that attempt is called Abhideya. Right? Abhideya means your attempt to practice devotional service and thus revive your relationship with Krishna. That is Abhideya Jnana. That Krishna gives in the third line. Now, Prayojana, as our dear Karthik said, Prayojana means the result, ultimate result. What is the ultimate result of this Abhideya or the process of Bhakti Yoga to attain Bhava Samanvita, to attain uh, Bhava or Prema or love for Krishna. So once you understand your relationship with Krishna and perform the necessary practices to revive that relation, you will end up loving Krishna. You will end up experiencing the love of Krishna. The purpose of human life is in expressing love for Krishna and experiencing love of Krishna. That is called Krishna Prema. You experience Krishna's Prema and you develop Prema for Krishna. That is the purpose. That is the prayojan. That is the result of Bhakti Yoga. Isn't it? So all these three Krishna has beautifully covered in this, in this uh, shloka. 10th chapter, 8th shloka. Let's go a little more deep. Brahma is the creator and Krishna is the creator of creator. Okay. So, Brahma said in the second cant of Bhagavatam that uh, Narada Muni asked a question to Brahma. You are the creator of the universe, right, Brahma? But I see you constantly meditating on somebody. You are closing your eyes and you are meditating, doing something. Okay. So, whom are you meditating upon? If you are the supreme, if you are the creator of the entire universe, uh, what is the necessity that you meditate on somebody else? Uh, is there someone superior to you? Okay, you are the creator. Everything in the entire universe came from you. <laughs> Many people <laughs> still believe that Brahma is the creator, which may be correct. But Brahma, let's hear the answer from Brahma's own words. Brahma said that I am creator definitely, 
but I am a secondary creator. I create what has already been created by the Supreme Lord Krishna. He is the primary creator, I am the secondary creator. What he does is primary creation or sarga, what I do is secondary creation or visarga. Okay. Now let's understand this from an example, through an example from Bhagavatam itself. Bhagavatam gives this example. Uh, a farmer creates a crop, isn't it? He gives the fertilizer, he gives water, he uh, plucks out the weeds, unnecessary plants, and he will raise mud banks on all four sides of the field to retain water within the field. And he does the needful uh, to, to grow the crop nicely. Right? He is the one who who transforms a flat, normal land which is filled with only mud, he transforms that into a land filled with so many plants um, that can produce grains or fruits or vegetables, etc. Right? So, farmer is the creator of a crop. Although farmer did so many things to generate the crop, can the farmer create the seed uh, seed is not created by the farmer. Seed is planted by the farmer in the land and the land has the ability to transform that seed into a plant. And who has invested that capacity within that seed to become a plant? Who has invested uh, the land to produce a plant from the seed? Who has invested water to nourish that seed? So, the qualities, the innate qualities of water, land, seed, uh, sunshine and climate, etc., are not creations of the farmer. Okay. Farmer just utilizes all these naturally existing facilities uh, and brings them together to generate a crop. Okay. But the farmer himself is not creating sunshine, he's not creating water, he's not creating seeds, he's not creating plants, he's not creating land, he's not inducing that um, properties within the land or water, etc., isn't it? Farmer is just bringing all these natural resources together to produce a crop. Brahma is like that. Okay. Brahma is definitely creator. Just like farmer is a creator of the crop, Brahma is creator of the universe. But the farmer does not create the characteristics of all the ingredients that he is using to generate that crop. Similarly, Brahma also cannot create the souls. Brahma does not have... Uh, the ability to generate all the ingredients required for creation. The Supreme Lord Vishnu or Krishna will provide the ingredients, Brahma will accept them, take them, process them and then make uh, make uh, uh, this universe. Okay. So, uh, oh, there is some comment here. Legos. <laughs> uh, they like kids plays with Legos, right? Uh, they, they bring Legos together to make uh, some cars or buildings, etc. But the kids are not creating the Legos. Okay, good. So, Brahma is the creator, but Krishna or Vishnu is the creator of the creator. Now, somebody may question, if Krishna has created everything, who created Krishna? How many of you have, uh, have uh, encountered this question asked by common people? Who created Krishna? What is your answer? If, if someone asks you, Krishna created everything, but who created Krishna? Manvir? Krishna created himself only. Krishna created himself. Okay. Yes, you want to answer? Komal. Ah, Prabhuji. If anyone asks me any oh, who created Krishna, then I will say Krishna is means born. Means like uh, that Uttam something type of. Okay. Means, okay. So basically. If, if you answer, uh, like they, they say that Krishna created everything. You say that Krishna created everything. And they ask you, who created Krishna? And you give some answer. So and so person created Krishna. Then they will ask, who created that person? You give some answer. They will say, who created that person? <laughs> so whenever you say something, they will ask the source. Okay. The source of the source of the source of the source of the source is Krishna. Right. So basically, when, when you read this shloka, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Mattaha Sarvam Pravartati, we need to understand that 
here is a shloka that is describing the source of everything the source of the source of the source of the source of everything the cause of the cause of the cause of the cause of everything in this entire creation by definition the basic definition of god is he is the source of everything he is the cause of everything he himself does not have a cause or source then only he is called god if you question who is the cause of god you have not understood the basic definition of god only right god means he is not created by anything created uh, is not a created being he is the supreme creator who does not have a cause who does not have a source who does not have an origin right and that, that's what krishna says in this bhagavad gita in this particular shloka i am the origin of everything i myself don't have origin namo namaste khila karanaya who knows this shloka namo namaste khila karanaya Yes, you know. Okay. I will try. Uh, uh, namo namaste khila karana ya akhila kam. Okay. Namo namaste. Oh, you know. I, I, I know only half something. Namo no, half is sufficient. Namo namaste khila karana ya nishkarana ya dhutkarana ya. Enough. This is what we want. This is what is relevant in our current discussion. This is a shloka spoken by Gajendra, Gajendra's prayer. Namo namaste akhila karanaya. Gajendra is offering prayer to the Lord. Oh Lord, you are akhila karanaya. Means you are the cause of all causes. Nishkaranaya, you yourself don't have a karana. Akhila karana means cause of all causes. Nishkarana means one who does not have a cause, right? One who does not have a source. Therefore, you are called adbhuta karanaya, the wonderful cause. Okay. Krishna is the wonderful cause. because he himself does not have a cause but he causes all causes in this world sarva karana karana okay that's the basic definition of god okay now why krishna is saying like this i am the cause of everything nobody is superior to me matta haparataram nanyat he is speaking so much is is it that krishna is boasting about himself right is krishna very proud arrogant uh, is krishna uh, you know very uh, uh, what to say is egoistic is it false ego the, the, because of which krishna is saying yes i am the source of everything okay if someone says like that in this world we call him proud person right is krishna proud yes answer why krishna is boasting about himself so much no way krishna is not boasting about him that's true and krishna is showing the eternal truth to us so that we can go closer to him we can have faith in him that yes he is the creator he is the one who has created everything he is the supreme he is the one to take shelter hmm. okay good what's your other explanation he is saying all that because it is not false ego it is true knowledge okay it is true knowledge it's not false ego <laughs> yes what's your answer prabhu ji uh, krishna was uh, so compassionate and he, like he is not boasting uh, otherwise he would not be so compassionate on a uh, which putna like he is compassionate and is telling us the truth that uh, uh, that that is uh, correct and like with our material intelligence we can uh, some common man may say that he is boasting but uh, actually he, he, he is saying the truth like uh, it is okay. confirmed in many scriptures also oh, okay fine it's confirmed in many scriptures also he is speaking the truth but sometimes in this world although somebody speaks the truth still there is a tinge of pride or arrogance there right so you have done some service you say i have done the service yes it is truth it is definitely truth that you have done the service but the mood in which you may present it may be associated with pride okay but as you have nicely highlighted krishna's announcing this fact eternal fact is not associated with pride or ego it is associated with compassion mercy when krishna is boasting about himself apparently he is trying to boost our faith in him right it's boosting our faith for example a mother takes a small child and goes to um, zoo okay you have gone to a zoo <laughs> where there are tigers and lions okay the child sees that big lion and the kid, and the kid is very scared mother says don't worry i am there i am there na you just hold my hand okay you just hold me tightly i am there the lion will not do anything so mother may not have so much of uh, 
uh, strength to fight with the lion if the lion really attacks. But the mother is saying that as long as you are with me, you need not be scared. Mother is giving a sense of reassurance, sense of protection, confidence to the child. He need not be scared. Uh, the child need not be scared, need not be fearful. You can be, feel very happy, secure and safe in my protection as long as you are with me. Right? If you just leave my hand, then you will be fearful. If you just hold my hand or if I, uh, if you keep your hand in, in, in my grip, then you need not fear anything. So mother is not boasting about herself. Basically, mother is giving confidence to the child that I am there to serve you. I am there to protect you. I am there to... Uh, they are there to save you from all dangers. So Krishna, when he is speaking about his own glories in Bhagavad Gita, it's not a display of Krishna's false pride or arrogance or, or something like that. It is display of Krishna's deep compassion. Actually, Krishna is very humble. When Krishna spoke about himself, that's only 700 shlokas of Bhagavad Gita. That too, all 700 are not spoken by Krishna. That too, in all 700 shlokas, Krishna is not speaking about himself only. Like in, the, in this kind of tone, that I am the source of everything, I am the cause of everything, no one is superior to me. He said all this, but once in a while, right? But he is speaking so many other facts like modes of material nature, Prakriti, uh, Janaka Maharaj, this and that. He is speaking many other things. So the, the shlokas in Bhagavad Gita where Krishna directly spoke about himself and his greatness and his glory are quite few. And Gita itself is a small book, 700 shlokas only. But when a devotee of Krishna speaks about Krishna, it is 18,000 shlokas of Bhagavatam. Right? Okay, devotees glorify Krishna more than Krishna glorifying himself. And whatever Krishna spoke little bit about himself is only to boost our faith, not to boast about his glories. Right? Krishna is giving us faith, reassurance. Unless Krishna authentically authoritatively says what he is and what he can do, how can we develop faith in Krishna? How can we be assured that serving Krishna, performing devotional service unto Krishna uh, is, is the best spiritual path and that causes me the greatest benefit? How can we be confident about it? So to be confident about it, Krishna is speaking like this. Krishna is just trying to boost our faith and increase our confidence in him so that uh, we take his shelter. So it's a matter of necessity for Krishna and it's a display of compassion of Krishna when he boasts about himself and when he speaks about himself. <laughs> right? So now this compassionate spirit we need to notice with our intelligence. What is the shloka? Aham sarvasya prabho mattaha sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante imam means knowing, understanding with your intelligence you understand this fact that Krishna is the source of everything and he is declaring it out of his compassion. When you understand it, then you can love him. Then you can have emotions for him. Oh, my, my Lord, my dear Lord loves me so much and he's speaking about himself to inspire me to take his shelter. So that should actually create an emotional bonding between you and the Lord, right? That should create an emotional bonding and that's how we develop emotions. <laughs> One is by doing his sadhana, you develop prema or bhava. That's like developing emotions for Krishna. But here, uh, another way is, even if you don't come to the stage of complete prema, even in sadhaka stage also, you should have some emotions for Krishna. You should have some emotional bonding with Krishna. So unless you invest your emotions in Krishna, uh, you cannot continue as a devotee of Krishna, just based on intellectual conviction. Intelligence has a limit. Intellectual conviction and philosophical understanding has a limit to uh, maintain our consistent association with somebody or something. Unless there is an emotional bonding, uh, that connection, that relationship is not solid. right? So we should let us not just use our intelligence to understand Krishna's glories. Let us also use our mind and heart to cultivate emotions for Krishna. Right? So these emotions will become very high and, and solid when we come to bhava stage. But even in sadhaka stage also, we should have some feelings, some affection, some bonding, some emotions for Krishna. right? So you, you must have experienced those loving emotions for Krishna to some degree, at least intermittently. Once in a while they go. 
मे बी ऑन जन्माष्टमी यू गेट लॉट ऑफ इमोशंस और मे बी ऑन राधाष्टमी गेट लॉट ऑफ इमोशंस ओके सो वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दिस पॉइंट वेयर इफ कृष्णा क्रिएटेड एवरीथिंग बट हु क्रिएटेड कृष्णा दैट मीन्स यू वी डोंट हैव ए बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ डेफिनेशन ऑफ गॉड गॉड मीन्स ही इज नॉट क्रिएटेड बाय एनी वन आर एनीथिंग ही इज द क्रिएटर ऑफ एवरीथिंग इन दिस एंटायर क्रिएशन सो the the conclusive message is don't stop at knowing krishna is the source or sustenance of everything move ahead to whole heartedly love and serve krishna that's real knowing for example if i am very thirsty now i ask somebody give me water <clears throat> then give me water and the people who are sitting in front of me nobody nobody is there now i am alone sitting in my room <laughs> you are all with me you are online you cannot get me water anyways <laughs> so if i say i get i want water there may be 10 people sitting here all of them here they have knowledge yes this person is thirsty and uh, uh, he needs water they have knowledge about this and they may even analyze why this person became thirsty because for half an hour or 40 minutes he has been speaking therefore he became thirsty or since morning he did not drink water probably that say he became thirsty they may analyze they may have so much knowledge about this thirst <laughs> the thirst that i have but someone who is really concerned who actually understood my statement i need water i am thirsty he will get up and get a cup of water and give me whether this fellow analyzes uh, the cause of my thirst and this and that or not he is being very practical he has given me water he has actually heard it right so the person who just heard the sound that i am thirsty has not actually heard the person who got up and got water and gave me he has actually heard isn't it do you agree with this similarly by reading bhagavad gita let us not just understand krishna's glories yeah we have to do that buddha has its role to play let's intellectually understand krishna is great krishna is like that krishna is like this we understand But just act on that understanding, right? Krishna is great. Then what am I supposed to do with his greatness? I should serve him, right? If Krishna is the source of everything, what am I supposed to do? Bhajanti ma, we should render service to him, right? So we should love him. We should develop love for him. So let us not make our study of Bhagavad Gita an intellectual exercise only, an attempt to philosophically understand things only. Many times we have hundreds of questions. My God. why this is like this why that is like this which manmantra this happened which yuga it happened which color is see so there we have many questions they are all valid okay but let us not just ask let us not just stop at enquiries only let us not block ourselves uh, in understanding krishna's tattva only let us act let us do something for krishna let us serve krishna let us have love for krishna let us develop love for krishna you cannot know everything about krishna we already discussed couple of weeks back you cannot know everything about krishna but whatever you know about krishna try to put that in practice try to apply that understanding in your real life practical life and try to do some seva to krishna even towards guru also now you sit next to a guru what is that shloka where krishna speaks the way of uh, you, know, you know learning from guru Okay, Kamakshi, you speak. You didn't speak today. Kamakshi, I don't know the story. You take some help from your brother. The beginning, you know. I know you know. Tadvidhi. Tadvidhi mani pate na mani prakshne na sevaya. Upadekshanti take na. Anyways, you have covered what is needed. Tadvidhi. Tadvidhi prani pate na mani prakshne na sevaya. You need to approach Guru in three ways. right three things are needed pranipata submissiveness respect pariprashna relevant enquiries seva service if pariprashna is sufficient you ask questions you get answers you get knowledge if that is sufficient why would krishna add this word seva <laughs> right seva is also important right so don't just stop at gathering knowledge about krishna don't just polish your buddha have some bhava and do some bhajan okay bhava bhajan buddha all three are required <laughs> something similar uh, krishna is also saying here let's let's go back to the shloka ah see this now bhajanti means rendering service to krishna then 
Buddha means intelligence, intellectually understanding what Krishna is. Bhava means having emotion for Krishna. Okay. So now, when you approach a guru, what are you supposed to do? Pranipata means respect, submissiveness. That's your emotion, that's your attitude is respect. So that is here. Okay, respect. That is pranipata. Then relevant enquiries. What are relevant enquiries? Pariprashna. That is Buddha. Okay. Then seva. Seva is bhajante. So all three are required. Don't just use only your intelligence to understand Krishna Tattva or some knowledge from Guru. Also use your ability to render service and also have some feelings, have some emotions, right? Bhakti is not an intellectual exercise. Okay, the whole process of bhakti yoga is not just an intellectual exercise or a physical exercise. Bhakti is a heartfelt activity. Bhakti is not just uh, an action. It is also an emotion associated with an action. So, that's for Prabhupada always translated bhakti as devotional service. You should have devotion in the heart. You should do some service with your hands. Right? Heart and hands, both should come together. So, what will give that strength to both heart and hand uh, to, to connect with Krishna? Head. Your, with your head, you should understand Krishna Tattva. So, when hearts, hands and head, all three come together, then it is a complete uh, the performance of bhakti. Okay. So, bhajanti imam, buddha bhava, three things. So, devotion with head and heart is the right balance. If you only focus on the head, only buddha part, and you don't have bhava, there's an issue. Or if you only have bhava, very sentimental, very emotional, uh, but you don't have a proper understanding of uh, the tattva, that also is a problem. So you understand tattva nicely with your buddha, develop nice bhava, emotions for Krishna, both. So bhakti is not just a choice of head, it is the calling of the heart. We should not just develop intellectual conviction, we should also have emotional connection. When intellectual conviction and emotional connection meet, then your service to Krishna is sustainable. So therefore, let us have bhakti, let us perform bhakti in a very holistic way, not in one way. Like you go to gym, for example, some of you may go to gym, I don't know. <laughs> so you may do workout. You do workout only on hand. Hand muscles will become very big and then you become very strong in one hand. This hand, no exercise. Legs, no exercise. Other parts of the body, no exercise. If you focus only on one hand only, <laughs> it, it, it's like uh, imbalance, right? Similarly, don't focus only your intelligence on Krishna. Don't focus only your mind on Krishna. Don't focus only on your hands uh, or, or senses in Krishna. Have all three. Bhajante, Buddha, Bhava. Right? Develop emotions for Krishna. Intellectually understand Krishna Tattva and also do service to Krishna. Then bhakti will become complete. Okay? Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Srila Prabhupad ki jai, Hare Krishna. Any more recitations? Riyansh, recite. Aham sarvasya prabhavo vatta sarva vravartate iti vartva vajante vam buddha bhava samarvita Hare Krishna Prajitala Varpranam Next Hare Krishna Prajitala Aham sarvasya prabhavo vatta sarvam pravartate iti matvam vajante vam buddha bhava samarvita Okay Next. Bully Reddy Bro. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Mattaha Sarvam Pravatate Iti Matva Bajante Maam Buddha Bhava Saman Vitaha. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Next. Uh, Tanvi Mataji. Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Matta Sarvam Pravatate Iti matva bhajante maam buddha bhava saman vitaha. Next. Next. Swati Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartate. Iti matva bhajante maam buddha bhava saman vitaha. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you. Dandavat Pranam. Thank you. 